Hello YouTube, this is Morgan, Airspeed Prime here on my next Boruto anime episode review. This one is going to be for episode 40, which is called Team 7 First Mission. And uh, yeah, this was a really good episode. Um, I like that in a way they were referencing the original Team 7, like Naruto's first mission in that, of course, they went with the idea that the team's first mission is always a fairly kind of basic one. They always get like a D rank, uh, potentially a C rank. But that in this case we're seeing like uh, Naruto in the original series, it very quickly develops into being, you know, basically a B rank mission because there's of course extra layers to this mission that they weren't told about initially and they're kind of forced to stick in with the action so as to avoid a lot of people dying in the process. So um, it immediately puts the team in a position where they really have to adapt to what's going on. But I suppose the the idea that they're playing with here is that while I suppose technically this Team 7 is the better trained and probably more skilled team than um, Naruto, Sasuke and Sakura were at the time on their mission. Um, just the kind of era that they're in, like this group in a way has a little bit more confidence and might get themselves into even more trouble even though they're more skilled. Um, whereas I really liked that scene with Hinata where Bo Borto asked Hinata like what, what was your first mission like and how did you feel about it and she just says that you know I was nervous about it not in a excited nervousness no nervous way but just because of the era there was always a fear a worry that you could get kind of drawn into a bigger conflict because the the nations were at war with each other Whereas here, they're like, that's like a preposterous idea. Like the, the nations are not going to go to war because the, all the, the Kage are friends. But we're seeing here, just in this dispute between these two villages, um, the idea that war still exists is coming up. And especially now with the reveal that the enemy have Shinobi on their side, it suddenly makes things a lot more dangerous, which we saw through the little fights that we got here. And immediately it, it kind of places a certain importance on Konohamaru in that he's going to have to play the Kakashi role uh, that Kakashi played in Naruto's first mission here. Which was that when you when you really break it down, Kakashi did most of the fighting on the first mission. He, he had a lot of the, the key scenes be about him. The, the team got their opportunity to show their teamwork in an actual you know, proper action situation and you know become better... Uh, I suppose gain the mentality needed to be on a mission of just constantly being aware of the danger and so on. Well, Kakashi did do most of the fighting. And that's what we're probably going to see here in that they specifically noted that um, Sarada didn't really move to action when uh, that Shinobi attacked and Boruto did. And while I think the episode made a point of kind of saying that, you know, teamwork is the key, don't go off on your own. The fact was that all three of them were there with that ninja, and the only one who really jumped into action was um, Borto. That even Mitsuki sort of stayed back until later on in the, the mission. So um, it might just be that Mitsuki was aware that this guy was maybe better than him or something like that, but um, at the same time, we know Mitsuki can basically take out someone of Shino's level if he has to. So um, that's a. Uh, that's a pretty interesting dynamic they have going on here that in this case it's going to be uh, like Sarada probably that has to learn the kind of uh, mentality to really gain that backbone needed to kind of be involved in these fights and that she she was sort of surprised herself that she didn't really jump into action. She seemed to get past that as we go on but I'm wondering will they play with that dynamic like they played with the, that with Naruto in on his first mission where Sasuke was actually fairly open to fight initially um, and it was Naruto who was, who was kind of like stood still in the middle of some of these uh, first conflicts that were happening um, but definitely it, it, it's, it feels very serious now that like if Konohamaru hadn't come in that Borto probably could have been killed and even then he, he got a pretty serious injury to his arm like uh, they didn't note that it was too bad but like he, he got a pretty bad cut on his arm uh, in the middle of all of this and um, I suppose in a way that's going to have to be what some of this arc is about it's kind of uh, really emphasizing that to Borto that you don't act out of your own self-interest on these missions it is about teamwork and we keep saying that but we keep saying it for a reason um, and 
that seems to be what they're going for in the next episode, that they'll really get to that point where they understand that they're on a mission that really they're not suited to. Teamwork is the only way they're going to really tackle anything. So there's a lot of excitement for next week's episode, I think, because it looks like Konohamaru is going to get a big chance to shine. And then the three team members are probably going to get a chance to shine, working together as a team this time. But um, the mission that they were actually sent on was quite interesting in that it didn't really feel like a sort of D-rank mission just because it involved kind of expelling bandits and... Well, you know, there's a, there's a skill level. Just the idea that um, Shikadai's team was sent on a mission to just escort a rich lady around, like, the town of Konoha was kind of... And that's on par with this bandit kind of removal mission. Um, that was that was the kind of a, a little bit of a weird one. But at the same time, they, they had that in the original series, but, like, the first mission for, like... Naruto was like just catching a cat or something like that and then it, it moved on to like oh wait you just jump up one rank and you're suddenly dealing with enemy ninja um so that that that, that was quite fun but the, as I said the mission um the basic idea was it like it's this kind of a was a green is a green valley or blue valley um you know either way they, they basically emphasized the idea of green and blue uh our you know our team is basically been hired by green to defend against blue and they're making a, a big emphasis on the idea of this kind of drawbridge that they have and the fact that that brings in toll money and that, that this was this amazing idea by uh, the previous head of this village to have this toll money to make up for the fact that they don't have much resources so they sort of control this um, pretty notable drawbridge that's the only bridge in the area to kind of move from this section to this section um, which they said was like at the border of the land of fire and the land of wind, I believe they said. Um, so that, that that's pretty cool. And in a way, that's probably what the, the whole idea of the deed of the bridge is about. It's about who has control over the money that, that is gained by um, having such an important uh, area. It's, I suppose, very similar actually to the original Naruto mission in that it was about kind of the... The, the gang in that case having control over the town stopping them from ever building a a bridge that would allow them to kind of trade with other uh, villages and so on to gain prosperity and it's somewhat similar here in that the bridge has allowed this town to survive but now this other town in the same area which is equally as affected is probably suffering because they're not gaining any of the money from the bridge whereas only the the green village is um, now, I assume we'll be delving into the backstory here in that uh, Kiri, who is the current head of the village and is basically the same age as Borto and so on, she seems like she's she understands her role as the village leader and has made the correct moves in terms of hiring extra, extra support with the, the Leaf Village and so on, understanding the nature of why this conflict is happening. But she still is a kid and has been forced into this role um, very suddenly in that her father was killed apparently at some point so there's probably some sort of dealings going on between these villages beforehand that relates to the bridge and that's why the enemy ninja are after them um, so it's I think the setup is, is, is very very similar to the Land of Waves arc um, but um, we'll, we'll see exactly how they go about doing it um, I I wonder what kind of characterization they're going, really going to have with uh, Kiri, the, the head of the village. Um, in that I assume she will spend a lot of time with the, the team. In that, as I said, Konohamaru is probably going to be doing a lot of the fighting against these pretty high level ninja. Whereas I think that the trio, Mitsuki, Sarada and Boruto are going to be very much protecting her. So they'll get the chance to interact with her and, you know, develop... Um, and we'll see where we, where they go from here. Will they go down the path of somehow uniting these two villages and kind of splitting the money about for the um, uh, bridge? In that, this bridge should be something that like helps the entire area, not just the kind of green village. Um, but uh, there's still a lot to go. This is just the first episode. Uh, getting into heavy speculation right now um, isn't really gonna like uh, help all that much because. 
I think there's a lot of extra context to add to this. Uh, they've basically just said, okay, that, okay, the some of the villagers are under the control of Genjutsu, that's why they were attacked in the way they were, and Kiri has been kidnapped, and that's kind of where we leave off, that they're going to have to go on this mission, and Konohamaru became a little stricter towards the end, of just like, no, this is serious, Boruto, we have to stick together, we, we talk about teamwork for a reason. So, um, there's... A lot of excitement, I think, that uh, we're finally getting into some of the, the big stuff here. But at the same time, we still have to kind of get to the point where we're approaching the Borto movie. And it makes me wonder, like, are they going to commit to really doing this kind of, in a way, character downturn for Borto? Where he's been fairly likable up to now, of course, there's been some frustrations with him. But that it really becomes this hugely emphasized thing going forward. Or will they just um, maybe change the tone of the Borto movie a little bit? Um, that's what we're going to have to wait and see when they get to it. Um, because I think the development here has been good. And I could almost see them just altering the movie, even though it's come out beforehand, to adjust to the anime and what they've been doing. Um, so there's obviously that stuff still to come. But... Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very interested to see how long this arc is going to be, because obviously the Land of Waves arc is a, is a fairly substantial arc. It's, it's obviously the first main uh, big arc focused on a place. Um, will this just be like a small two, three episode arc, or are we committing to like, you know, the next 20 episodes are pretty much going to be focused on this? Um, that's going to be very interesting to see. In addition to that, I wonder, will they actually maybe focus on some of the other teams to see what they were kind of doing? Did any of them get tough missions? And how did they work together? Because I, I think the likes of uh, like Metal Lee, Denki, and Iwabe, I'd really like to see how their team works on a mission. Uh, similarly with uh, uh, Sumire's team, I, I'd really like to see how, how that team works. Um, as well as just getting confirmation on like who all the, uh, the like Jonin leaders are and so on. Uh, final thing to mention with this episode is that we did get a brief scene with the, the enemy shinobi talking about this and I really like that they referenced the fact that they're dealing with Kona he here. That there's a certain fear that those shinobi have about the fact that, okay, it's just a team of kids and one strong shinobi, but that they're sort of scared that if the Kona, Konoha call in backup that they're going to have to deal with some of the most powerful ninja in the world and that I, I like the scene where they reference the the powerful shinobi who survived the war and we basically see our characters like uh, um you know Sakura, Ino, Hinata, like everyone we know like Naruto, um, Choji and all, all those characters that survived and any of them can come back into action and be a huge threat to anyone which I really like because it, it's something that, in a way, um, they didn't do as much with their original Naruto because, obviously, they had to do it where a lot of the older characters, who were the established shinobi, had to more be established through their backstories. Whereas, we've seen our characters right now, who are the established shinobi, become as powerful as they are. And now, they're the respected characters in that um, Konohamaru is kind of like the Kakashi of this generation. and back in early stages of original Naruto, Kakashi was like the best ever. And then we got introduced to the likes of like Kurenai and Asuma. And that's like the level that like Shikamaru and uh, Ino are on now. So there's a lot, a lot of cool stuff to kind of come into play here in that. That's I think where a lot of the excitement is going to come from when we start to have bigger threats and we start to use maybe some of those characters a little bit more of like, here is the here's like a couple of our kind of younger characters, but they're being backed up by like Ten Ten this week, and like here's Ten Ten showing like some amazing ninja tool action and so on. Um, but yeah, that that's my thoughts on uh, this week's episode. Very promising start to this uh, first mission for Team Seven. Uh, I really really enjoyed the episode. But uh, yeah, in the comments let me know what your thoughts are on the episode. But uh, other than that, that's been the video. Thanks for watching and bye.